So today I just want to do a quick video talking about how to set your icons within LF. Now I was expecting this to be really simple, but it turns out that this isn't documented very well. Now, by not documented very well, what I mean by this is that I actually had to look at the code base to work out how to actually do some stuff that's not in the example configuration they have. So let's just have a look at how this works. It shouldn't take too long, but it is a little bit annoying to work out. So first up, you're obviously going to want to make sure your icons are actually enabled within LF. So to do that, what we're going to do is go, let's just use LF to do this. Go into our configuration folder, go to the LF folder, go to your LFRC. Obviously, if you don't have an LFRC, make sure you actually make this file and put it in the folder that I just specified. And then in here, you're going to do set icons true. And once you've done that, then your icons will actually be working. So you might have already noticed that my icons look different to how they look by default. But we'll get back to that in just a moment. So where you're going to be setting the icons are within your either your bash RC, your ZSH environment file, your, I don't know what you use on fish to set environment variables, wherever it is on your shell that you actually set environment variables. So obviously for bash and ZSH I know them, but I'm not sure about the others. So I will open up my ZSH env because I am using ZSH right now. And the variable that we're going to be writing is this one right here. So export LF underscore icons all in caps. And then from there, you're going to start putting in all of the stuff that you want to use. Now, this example is pretty much taken entirely from the GitHub page. So if you just copy this in here, and you just drop it into your bash RC, your ZSH environment file, whatever it is that you're going to set your environment variables in, then you'll have most of the icons that I've set. But if you want to do any other stuff, then you're kind of going to be stuck because if we have a look at the bit of documentation that's here, it says enable the icons by doing this. The icons for different files can be configured using LF icons variable. Syntax for this variable is the same as the LS icons variable. Now the LS icons variable, I've searched for this for the past hour. I found literally no reference to it outside of this file right here. So I have no idea what this LS icons variable is supposed to be, but apparently LF icons uses the same syntax as it. I was thinking it might've been how you set icons within something like uh, color LS, LS icons, uh, LS deluxe, something like that didn't find any reference to it. So I have no idea what this LS icons is supposed to be. If someone knows what this is, let me know because I know that base LS doesn't actually read this variable. So I'm not sure what this is a reference to, but if you know what it is, then let me know. So before we get to actually modifying this variable here, you might notice that in my browser, it's not actually showing the icons properly. And this is because my nerd font isn't actually being loaded by Brave. I'm not entirely sure why, but for some reason, it's just not being loaded. But if you do copy this into something that does have a nerd font enabled, then all of these icons will actually work. So that's something else you should probably have. All of the icons in here are being taken from nerd fonts. I would recommend downloading nerd fonts if you do any programming work because it has things like uh, C sharp icons, C plus plus icons, Git icons, pretty much anything that you want to use for programming. So let's just have a look at some of the stuff that it does and then we'll get over to the other thing. So if you search for Git in here, as you can see, there's just a bunch of random icons and like you've got the GitHub icon, you've got a GitLab icon, another GitHub icon, another GitHub icon, a Git icon, another Git icon, lots of other stuff in here. So you can use all of these icons when you actually do have a nerd font installed. So you can have, I guess, a better idea of what the file is by just looking at the icon for it. So let's have a look at that variable before we actually go into the code base. The first couple lines are pretty straightforward. So DI is for setting the directory. FI is for setting the file. LN is for setting a link. OR I'm not sure about from the example on here, but I did look at the code base and OR seems to be for a broken sim link. And EX is for any executable. So anything that is set to uh, plus X with Chmod. So that'll be your scripts or any other files that you can run. And then for anything else, it's pretty straightforward. So even for things that are hidden files that start with a dot, you still have to do it this way. So for your vimrc, for example, you can go star.vimrc and that'll apply to only your vimrc or star.viminfo, star.gitignore. I'll show you one that's a bit more generic. So this one here, star.c. That'll apply to every single file that has .c as a file extension. And you can do this for as many things as you want. So the example that I downloaded has pretty much 
every programming file type you're gonna come across. So yeah, there's, there's tons of stuff. There's even other stuff in here like 7-zip files, there's image files, there's media files of other formats. Uh, I might change the music ones. There's .nix, there's .pdfs, tons and tons of stuff in here. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Now you might be a bit confused about the backslashes and the colons. So the backslashes are only there so I can put it across multiple lines. In reality, you can just write it like this. So scrap all of the backslashes and you can do it like this. The backslashes are only there as a way to put stuff across multiple lines. This works with any sort of string in bash or ZSH. It's just something that I'm doing to make it a bit easier to read. And the colons are there as a separator between each of the settings. So you have your directory setting, then you have your file setting, then you have your line setting. It's just a way to separate them. It's similar to what you would do with your path variable if you're setting in something like bash. Now that you've set the variable, if you're using something like bash, all you're going to have to do is restart the terminal. Because you've set the variable in your bashrc file, and this file is loaded every single time you reopen the terminal. If you're using zsh though, you've probably just used your zsh emp file. And for this, you're going to have to do one extra step. So Basically, all you have to do is write source.zshemp. So this is basically a way to load up files to configure your shell. So you run that and you'll notice that for me, nothing's really changed because I'm still using the same icon. So let's just change the, I guess, the directory icon to a vim icon so that you guys can see a bit of a change. So we'll save that, resource that, reopen LF. And as we can see, all of my folder icons have now changed to vim icons. So that's pretty straightforward how that works. but what about some of the other stuff you can do? Because there's actually some other settings you can use that just aren't talked about in this example. So let's just have a brief look at the source code and see if we can work some of it out. Now, it's only, what, 100-ish lines of Go code? Yeah, 91 lines of Go code. So it shouldn't be too difficult to work out. So this first function here is for the default icons by the looks of it. So it seems like there's a state called TW, ST, and OW. I'm not sure what those are, but let's see if we can work them out. Now, the function it looks like we care about is this one right here. So parse icons emp. So if we look here, it's going to try to read the LF icons file somewhere around here. So this is get emp, and then, yeah, it's, it's returning the result of this right here, and it's passing that into that function. So it looks like the parse icons emp is what we're actually looking at. Now, what are some of the states we have? So here's tw. I'm not sure what this actually does. So it checks if it's a directory and then it checks the mode against mode sticky. So I guess there's a folder type called uh, sticky. I'm not really sure what that does or how a folder becomes a sticky folder, but I guess that's a thing that can happen. And then it's also checking against 002. So you're going to have to check what this function actually returns. I'm not sure what it actually returns, but yeah, it. I, I haven't run into a place where I'm missing a folder icon, so it doesn't seem to be too important. So here's the ST one. This is also a sticky folder, but it doesn't have the 002 there. So I guess that's some sort of different state. I wish this was at least commented a little bit because I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be doing. And here we have the OW. So this just checks against the 002, but it doesn't check if it's a sticky folder. So yeah, I'm not really sure about that either. The link state ones are pretty straightforward. So here's your LN. So that's the one we were setting before, this one right here. And then OR, as I was saying before, is for a broken link. So this right here checks if the state of the link is broken. So if you try to sim link to a file that doesn't exist, that's when that will be used. There's also a one for PI for a mode named pipe. I guess there's like a pipe file type. I'm not really sure what that exactly is. There's a socket, so that is SO, char device, which is CD, mode device, which is BD, set UID, which is SU, and set GID, which is SG. And then lastly, we've got the EX, and then just parse everything else. So parsing everything else would be all of this stuff right here by the looks of it. Now, how does it actually split the string? Because I'm wondering if I can use something like an or statement with a regex, but it looks like right here, it splits on the equal sign. It doesn't do any extra parsing besides that. So I couldn't do something fancy like say, have an uh, a pipe here and go dot vim 
info and then do both the settings with the same line. It doesn't look like that's actually possible. That's a little annoying, but I guess it's fine. So it just splits on the equal sign and then basically sets this file type to this icon. That's pretty straightforward, I would say. One interesting thing to note about this code base is actually using bitwise and statements to do the comparisons between these two values. So rather than doing something like an equals equals, what it's doing is actually checking the binary value against the binary value for the other one. I'm going to assume it's probably slightly quicker to do it like this. I'm not entirely sure, but that's the only reason I could think of doing it like this. And then basically what it's doing is checking if the result is not zero. So if it's anything besides zero, that means that the answers are equal because the only time it won't be zero is when the results are exactly the same. It's not really that important to the video. I just noticed it and I kind of wanted to point it out. And the last thing I should probably mention is, yes, I did actually check the man page. I'll show you right now just because I know someone's going to complain about that. So man LF and we search for icon. The only reference to it is how to actually enable it. There's no other reference to it in the entire documentation. So we could search for like LS. There's a bunch of references to the characters LS. There's an LS colors. And that's about it. There's nothing about how to do LS icons. Is this anywhere? LS, let's spell it differently. LS underscore icons. Nope. There's absolutely nothing about it in the entire documentation. There doesn't seem to be anything in the readme about it or on the wiki. So I'm not really sure what this LS icons is supposed to be. I'm not really sure why there's just no documentation for it. It's not too complicated, but it is a little bit annoying that I do have to search the code base to actually see that there's other settings that you can use that just aren't mentioned in the example. It's not a big deal, but it is just a little bit annoying. So I reckon that's pretty much everything I want to talk about. So if you liked this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links. I've got my support links. And I've also got my alternate video platforms. So I reckon that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. If anyone knows anything about this LS icons variable, let me know down below and I'll be absolutely happy to hear about it. So I reckon that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.